Hi there. It's April 26th and we continue our progress through the good news of Luke and we're starting in chapter 22 verse 54 and going through to chapter 23 and verse 12. At the end of chapter 22 we have the scene where Jesus has been arrested and he's been taken before the, uh, the, the, the he's been taken before the chief priests and the scribes and all of those who are his accusers before the Sanhedrin. And Peter goes, but he follows at a distance as Jesus is taken off to prison. And famously three times he is asked by different people whether he's the one they think he is who's been with Jesus. And Peter, to protect himself in a self-defensive move, denies knowing Jesus. He probably sees it as a tactical move to avoid arrest himself. But he basically pushes back and the third time the cock crows, just as Jesus said he would, he's denied him. And it says that um, Peter then went out and uh, in Greek, Eklav sepi cross, he wept bitterly. And uh, But there's one other thing here that Luke tells us that the other gospel writers don't have. They just have this moment of Jesus turning and looking at Peter. And it's as though in that one look, Peter sees all of his story, but also all of his rescue. And he realises that he is let down his saviour, he's let down his rescuer. And then the scene moves to Jesus on guard, being guarded before his trial. And the uh, insults and the maltreatment that he suffers at their hands as they hit him and as they say prophesy who hit you. And Jesus is um, abused and ill-treated by these who are supposed to be guarding him. And then he's brought before the Sanhedrin and they are seeking uh, to find a cause against him and they, they can't get Jesus to, to, uh, to do it himself. So eventually they ask him, are you the one, uh, are, you, are, you going, are you the one who is the son of God? And they say, well, you say that, not me. And then they say, well, look, we've heard it from his own mouth. Uh, he says he, he's going to be seated at the right hand of God. And then they take him to Pilate, and Pilate is uh, a very complex character. He's a very harsh governor. He knows how to do politics. And when he hears that Jesus is not actually a Judean, but a Galilean, he sees a way of passing the buck. And so he, he passes the Jesus' judgment over to Herod, because Herod happens to be in Jerusalem on this day. But before Herod, Jesus says absolutely nothing. It says, Luke says that Herod wanted to see him do some wonder or some sign. But Jesus is not playing ball with that. He's not giving Herod any response. And so it says that Herod and his soldiers, again, ill-treat Jesus. They dress him up in a, a royal robe and mock, they mock him. And then they send him back to Pilate. And as a result of this uh, encounter, uh, G, uh, Herod and Pilate become friends that day where they've been enemies before that. As we see Jesus in this terrible situation, we need to remind ourselves that Jesus says this is his purpose, this is what he came for. He can rely on the, the venal um, duplicity, he can rely on the political manoeuvring, he can, he can rely on the vain manipulation of men, to see all these things happen. But we see him standing there as a saviour, as one who loves us, as one who cares for us, as one who is bent on our redemption by his blood. Have a very good April 26th.